Hello and welcome to Raising Your IT IQ. My name is James and today I'm going to cover passwords. I know it's not the most riveting of subjects, but I promise the information I cover is going to save you a lot of stress and a lot of frustration. In the video, I'm going to show you how to reset your password, how to find your saved passwords in your browser, and if all else fails, where to go for help. So let's jump into resetting our password. So right here on the login page, you're going to see this link that says expired or forgotten password, reset here. So you're going to click that link. So on this page, you're going to see the password requirements here, and it's going to give you all that information. We're going to click on continue. Now what you want to do is in the first box, we're going to put in our email address. Then we want to fill out the captcha. We'll just click on next. Now you need to verify you are who you say you are, and you can choose any one of these uh, methods here. So I'm going to go with uh, call my office phone. So I'll put in my office number. I'll click on call. So I'll press on pound like it tells me to. So now that that's done, you'll choose a second method of verification. As you can tell, they're very serious about security. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose approve a notification on my Authenticator app. So I'll click on send notification. And now that that's done, we're gonna set our new password. Uh, something to keep in mind is that you'll want to make your new password somehow different than your old one. Even if you just change a single letter or a single number, just so that it's somehow different. Now that you've created a new password, you can log in all of your student accounts again. Now, if you're like me, you like to save your passwords in your browser so you don't have to remember them. I don't actually recommend that you do that for your student account for the sole reason of signing into the Lockdown Browser. The Lockdown Browser forces you to type in your password every time you use it, and if you have it saved in Chrome or Firefox, there's a good chance you're going to forget it even though you think you know what it is. I do this all the time. Well, when you run into that situation, you can look up your saved passwords in your browser of choice. So let me show you how to do that now. I'll start with Chrome since that's the one that I use the most. So I'll show you how to do that. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is type in passwords.google.com into the address bar, and this will bring you to your password manager. And what you wanna do is just search for palmbeachstate.edu. You can click on that. And then what you'll do is you'll sign into your Google account and you'll see the, the website, the username, and then if you click this little I, you'll, it'll show you the password. Now you may see a few of these, but the one with your full email address is the one you want. Now let's switch over to Firefox and this one's gonna be a bit easier. So here we are in Firefox and all you have to do is click the hamburger menu at the top right, and you're gonna click on passwords. And right here you can search all of your logins. We, again, we just search for Palm Beach State. Now you probably won't have as many as I do here, uh, but you might have two or three, but you'll want to pick the one that um, has your full Palm Beach State email address. You click on that, and from here you can either click the I to show the password, or you can actually just copy with that button there. Now, let's say you've done this and you still can't log into your student account. Well, if all else fails, you'll want to contact the student IT department. Let me show you how to do that. So all you have to do is go to help.palmbeachstate.edu. Now this will bring you up to this screen here and then just click on for students technical support. And then here you can click on request tech support students only. Here you can either call the student IT desk at 561-868-4000 or you can submit a ticket. Now if they don't answer the phone, I definitely recommend submitting a ticket. Uh, you just kind of have to keep in mind that they do get a lot of phone calls. So if they're unable to answer your call, go ahead and submit that ticket and somebody will see that via email. That's all the time I have for this episode of Raising Your IT IQ. My name is James. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover, please email me at gasj at palmbeachstate.edu with ITIQ in the subject line. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.